Okay, it's going to be a great group. Okay, I'm going to get this thing going. Uh, my man Rick Spencer and I are going to uh, help navigate uh, today's conversation. Um, and we're really going to be talking about what the SBA is doing right now to help uh, combat uh, the worries that we have uh, with this coronavirus and how are we going to keep the doors open, be encouraged to keep our employees on staff. And really, today's conversation is really going to, I think, help us to put uh, our strategy together. How are we going to deal with this? Because with the, with the uh, lack of information, it's, uh, it's, it's caused us this uh, fear, uncertainty, doubt, uh, anxiety. And so today I'm hoping that we can sort of alleviate some of that, be as transparent as we can with the programs that the SBA is doing, um, and yet let you know that the information is still changing uh, and becoming more clear real time. So today we have with us uh, uh, a lead, the leadership of the SBA, Carrie Ellenwood is here along with Mike Rizzo. He is Five Star Bank, two people who are using their time uh, right now with us in our community. So we thank you. And, and before we get going, before we dive in deeply, I got I to gotta tell you, the Haney Biz team has rallied. Um, and I'm so proud of what our entire team has done to sort of rally around the small business community. I couldn't be more honored to be a part of Haney Biz. Um, and to help um, sort of lay some framework for today, um, I want to I introduce Rick Spencer, the VP of Haney Biz, who's, who's helping quarterback our response um, so that it can get us all sort of attacking in a way that helps everybody. Yeah, thanks, Mark. It's just been um, tremendous to see um, how the Haney Biz team has rallied around our community and how much uh, value our community has seen from this webinar series. Uh, this is our 10th webinar. We launched these um, just a week and a half ago, and so we're already in the double digits. We've been recording these webinars. We've been posting them uh, in our um, podcast channels, our YouTube channels, and it's just been um, you know, really tremendous to see how the Sacramento region has, has rallied around this crisis. And so um, you know, one of the things people ask is how Haney Biz can help, and we've got uh, our broad team here of experts uh, from – CPAs to CFOs to um, vice presidents of investment, and uh, we're all here to help you. And specifically, we've launched uh, two programs within the last week. Um, one is called the Crisis Action Plan, and this program allows you to work with that uh, expert team as well as our community experts um, to figure out your financial plan, your cash plan, and to actually get uh, a balance sheet scorecard and a specific action plan with priorities. Um, that's a service we normally charge $1,000 for. We're only charging $200 for that and donating all proceeds to Donate for Sacramento, which is another community effort that is rallying around uh, the response to small businesses and supporting small businesses in Sacramento. So um, take a look at that. The other is the Loan Assist Program. And so a lot of uh, small businesses haven't um, you know, secured uh, funding and loans recently and so they need support in organizing their financials and being loan ready and so uh, our team is available to support you with that as well and so uh, you can see the details uh, on the screen please reach out to me directly or go to our uh, crisis page uh, on our website to get more details uh, on these programs so without further ado I know this is a uh, hugely anticipated topic and uh, couldn't be more timely and um, a huge value to our community. So um, as Mark said, we have uh, Carrie Ellenwood with the SBA and we have Mike Rizzo, Chief Banking Officer with Five Star Bank and Five Star Bank has been a long time uh, community partner of Haney Biz and we are just so happy and thrilled to have uh, Five Star supporting us again. So thank you both for being here and uh, take it away, Mark. Okay, great. Um, and I want to start uh, by, by bringing up the idea of setting the framework for today's conversation. We're going to be talking about the different programs. Um, we're going to be talking about eligibility, el eligibility and requirements. How, you get, uh, how do you get this thing done? What are the terms? What are the, what are the conditions? And then make sure we answer all the questions. And so um, I'm going to start by turning it over to Carrie Ellenwood to kind of lead off, knowing that Carrie, at the, just before the conversation, Carrie 
made me uh, aware, made us aware that the, the details are changing and being more and being clarified as we speak. And so anything that Carrie says, um, we want this to, uh, we want to put out the uh, disclaimer that uh, the actual details will be available later in the week or Monday. So um, I wanted to sort of let her off the hook so that if she um, needs to have me or Mike answer a question from our vantage point, we will be happy to do that. But there are things that Carrie cannot commit to at this time. She won't be able to do that until later in the week or Monday. So Carrie, thank you. Uh, can you lead us off with just thinking about the, the overarching framework for, um, for the different choices that we have right now? Sure. Thank you very much, Mark, for having me on this call today. And I just want to, before I get started with the SBA piece of it, let the small business owners that are listening know that Everyone at SBA has been working diligently to execute on these programs, and we do have things in place right now that you can do as a small business person, and that is our disaster loan program. Those are called EIDL loans, Economic Injury Disaster Loans, and if you go to our website at sba.gov slash disaster, there's an online loan portal that you can apply directly for those loans. Some of the other topics of conversation today that, that I won't be speaking to directly will be able to be used in conjunction with those. And as, as Mark said, details to follow, but certainly know that those of us at SBA are working very hard to make sure that you have access to the capital that you need. Some of the things that our administrator, Jovita Carranza has done is she has implemented a delay of 12 months on any existing disaster loans that you might have. For example, if you were involved in the car fire and, and suffered a loss, those disaster loan payments are put on hold until December. In addition to that, when you look into this new disaster loan program that's available now due to the COVID-19, those disaster loans will also have a delay in the time that you start repaying them. For the COVID-19 disaster loans, the repayment terms are 15 years to 30 years, depending on your loan and your circumstance. And those loans for for-profit business, the interest rate is 3.75%. For the not-for-profits that are eligible, it's 2.75%. The best thing that you can do for yourself if you're a small business right now is when you get done with this call is to go online at sba.gov slash disaster and apply for a disaster loan. It'll walk you through the process. We have improved the back end engine of that system to a significant degree with a public private partnership that will expedite those loans certainly much faster than you might have experienced in the past. So give us time on that. And as other things move forward, I'll be happy to work with Mark and other of our community chambers and partners to get the information out. Thank you. Okay, so now I want to have a follow-up question with that. So just so we can delineate between the different programs, we have the disaster recovery, recovery loan, and that is, uh, is that a part of phase three? Is that part of phase two? Because we've heard these different phases. Correct. So the the economic injury disaster loans that are currently available were part of phase two, and those are ongoing, and they have also had additional attributes added to them in phase three, which is the CARES Act. Our SBA participation in that has not been uh, delineated yet, so I can't speak to the new additions and changes. I can speak to what happened in phase two, and that is what I just discussed. Okay, so, and uh, maybe one uh, clarification there. You, what, I, what I heard from you is that the disaster uh, loan that you're talking about, that you have the details on that you can um, you know, speak to, if we apply for that loan, which is to be repaid uh, under, under these terms, it does not preclude us from doing the uh, uh, the payroll protection, the uh, the the loan that will be uh, forgiven. Yes, that's correct. Okay, because a lot of us. Okay, go ahead. 
or I'm sorry, if you have a currently a need to apply for a standard SBA 7A loan, you can still do that if your cash flow provides you could pay it back. You can apply for the current economic injury disaster loan that I mentioned that was phase two, and that won't preclude you from looking at some of the other opportunities that are in the CARES Act. They're not okay. mutually exclusive. They're um, not mutual exclusive. I'm here with my wife, Mike Rizzo, too, on the call. He is Five Star Bank. And just thinking about the different uh, options there, Mike, um, I want to see if you want to add any clarification to what Kerry just said. Yes, I do. Um, <clears throat> so there was a bit of confusion around whether you could apply for a disaster loan and a PPP loan in last week and maybe even now. But the answer is that you can have <clears throat> both loans. But the key is the purpose of those loan proceeds cannot be of the same purpose. So you want to know the purpose of the PPP loan. And the, that's very specific. And we can get into that later. And the proceeds for the disaster loan cannot cross over. So they have to be separate. And that's, what, that's why you can have both. And that's why there was confusion earlier in this process. Okay, I want to make sure we dive into that at some point because I think those details um, I think yes. are, are something that's are on a lot of our minds is how we delineate between those two. So for the purposes of this call, though, we have the, uh, the disaster loan piece and we have the PPP. Are those the two uh, options that we're going to talk about on this call? Is that fair enough, Carrie? Would you agree? Those are the, that's kind of the delineation is the uh, disaster and the, um, the PPP. That's the forgivable piece of the uh, of the of the law or the regulation that you will not speak to specifically to carry but we'll let Mike and and myself maybe talk about our uh, what we know at this point is that fair right. okay right I'm not speak to that but certainly you can share your advice and information okay fantastic Mark so, there was a quick question about yeah. the SBA Express loans and any potential interplay uh, with that program as well there yeah, is the ex a bridge express loans that that was a pilot program. They have opened that up again. We will be working with our 7A lenders to execute on that. And again, that those details are still coming out there for the lenders. So they will get more information about that as well. And, and again, on that one, it doesn't preclude you necessarily from uh, applying for the, uh, the PPP. Correct. Okay. Um, Okay, so thinking about that, so as, as we set the framework here and we talk about where to go in the resources, so we have banks, we have the SBA, who are the other players uh, in the ecosystem that need to be uh, referenced at this point? So of where to go to get loans or to access uh, these opportunities? Uh, well, I think one of, the don't, one of the things we don't want to leave out for our small businesses is that we do have small business development centers, and they can assist a small business in applying for various types of loans that are out there. And I wanna encourage um, the small businesses in our region to go to the Capital Region SBDC and look at their website and call in and find access to one-on-one -on -one business resources that can help you if you need support in putting those loan packages together. <laughs> Okay, so again, as we uh, okay, so I'm going to move forward here. Uh, so as we go through, we'll uh, we'll delineate between the uh, the unforgivable loans and non-forgivable loans uh, that are that part of the disaster phase two, and the PPP, which will be forgiven. So maybe we uh, we well, let's talk about eligibility. Who is eligible for each one? Maybe we'll start with uh, you, Carrie, as we talk about uh, the uh, the. Uh, non-forgivable loan package. Um, they're, they're low interest rates. Um, maybe you can uh, set some uh, parameters for who might be eligible to, for that. Sure. For the, for the standard, the SBA idle loans, economic injury disaster loans, any small businesses that's defined as small by their NAICS code would be eligible for those. And also certain non-for-profit organizations 
Currently, it's a 501c3, and I don't remember the other number, but you can go online there and it will let you know at the disaster loan application portal which non for profits are eligible. Okay, now I saw that it's uh, employees, small business, employees uh, under 500. Um, you talked about the NAIC code, which uh, has to do with a, a revenue uh, number, I believe. Maybe you can, because there are some companies out there that are, let's say, 40 million in sales um, under 500 employees, but they've got to fit into uh, a certain code in order to, to qualify. Could you, uh, could you elaborate on that uh, a, a little bit? Uh, tell me sure, if I'm, maybe not, I'm off base a little bit. I don't know. It's, it's, you're not off base. It's just a little bit. I want them to understand that if they go to sba.gov slash contracting, they can put in the capital N, capital A, capital I, capital C, capital S, and that's their NAICS code that they file their taxes under. Within that guide on the SBA website, it will tell you what, what size you can be and still be considered a small business. And it's really actually quite large. So if you are a small business in your NAICS code and or if you're a sole proprietor, the economic injury disaster loan is still available to you. So don't think that because, oh, it's only me, I'm a sole proprietor, I, I can't apply. Yes, you can. So that's why I'm strongly encouraging you, your, your loan will be looked at in the order that it's received at sba.gov slash disaster. Okay, Mike, uh, so thinking about this, so uh, I'm not gonna dive too deep into that at this time, but making sure that I don't uh, uh, shoot myself in the foot when I go to apply for the disaster loan, um, I, I heard that there are, it, it can't be for the same thing. So if I've got uh, wages that I'm looking to um, borrow money against um, and under the new loan, this, uh, this three, this, pay, this PPP, it's going to be forgiven. I'm not going to want to borrow money under, uh, under the other one too, am I? Well, how am I going to uh, navigate that? If I, if, I, if I had a choice between money I had to pay back and money that would be forgiven, I think the obvious answer is the forgiven one, right? So mm -hmm. that's, the, that's the payroll protection program, the PPP. And um, the eligibility of that program is the same, less than 500 employees. You cannot have, it doesn't apply to uh, employees who may be working overseas uh, has to be a business that's been in business uh, prior to February 15th. Also applies to nonprofits, 501 C3s, and that other one that Carrie couldn't remember, nor do I. Um, <laughs> there's some clar clarification that needs to happen around that. Um, the, um, the, but, but yeah, so really, um, there's two things at this point that I think that people need to understand. Uh, specifically when they talk to a bank, and that is, one, you need to understand how COVID-19 has negatively affected your business. That should be really easy for everybody, right? There's probably nobody who hasn't been affected. That's the first part. But the second part of the PPP program is how do you determine a dollar amount of a loan? And that is based upon the average monthly payroll costs of your business, which also includes uh, not just the pay payroll itself, but uh, health insurance costs and the like. Um, so it's it's a pretty simple formula. You take the payroll costs, the uh, average monthly payroll costs, and you multiply that by 2.5. That's your potential loan amount. Okay. Um, and so that that's that's those are the two factors that I think that at least for at Five Star Bank we're asking our customers to think about and to send us though that information so we can get you going on in our queue um in terms of forgiveness that's a whole nother thing we can talk about i don't know when you get want to get into that but uh um but but uh what i that that uh calculation that you just gave me mike yep that uh one month's payroll times 2.5 that is for the forgivable loan side of the program that is for the right. ppp which which ultimately if you use the money appropriately would be a hundred percent forgivable if you use the money appropriately right and then for the appropriately can go to um things like rent or yeah, so mortgages there's, 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 really, there's three different things there's a uh, payroll of course right that's primary then there's a uh, rent if you're renting or mortgage interest if you own your own building 
and utilities. Okay, so utilities, okay. So that makes up that makes up the two point five. So you get two months worth of payroll, uh, and then the point five sort of makes is, is where you where you come up with the utilities and the rent and so on. That's right. Okay, and gotcha. Importantly, once the loan is funded into your account, you have eight weeks to spend that money. So you have two months to spend two and a half months worth of payroll. So you're going to be forced to pay some of your mortgage or your rent or your utilities with that money. Okay. Okay, so um, diving into this more, so, so somebody um, that I'm still delineating between the two programs because what I heard from Kerry uh, early was go get the disaster loan now and you can get the other one later uh, next week or when it becomes more clear. I want to make sure I'm not encouraging people to shoot themselves in the foot by uh, going and getting a loan that they have to repay uh, instead of getting one that you don't have to repay. So I want to make sure I, I understand that, um, that tightrope. Well, I have been telling people um, that they, if they want to apply for both to do so, um, there's no prepayment penalty on either of them. You can pay them off when you need to. So um, you, know, okay. you can pay that down right away if you had to, the, the disaster. So um, there's really no harm, no foul on, uh, on going and getting a line of credit um, or a loan and just no prepayment, almost as an insurance policy. Right now, the last thing we want to do is get caught with no cash. So I think a lot of us would like to be more liquid. So from that standpoint, uh, it makes sense for most companies to just uh, sort of stay more liquid with all this uncertainty. So that's, um, that's kind of the, uh, that's the same advice you would give, Mike, is go ahead for most companies uh, that, that maybe are, are concerned about their strength of balance sheet uh, in Q3 and Q4, go ahead and apply for the disaster loan. And then right afterwards, turn around and apply for the other one. And if you've got too much money, uh, pay off the uh, first loan. That's right. But as we get further down the road here, even in today, today, you know, I think more and more people are, are looking at the forgivable PPP loan than anything else. Would you agree with that, Carrie? I think I would think so, you know, from the agency's perspective, I really feel that the small business wants to get that economic injury disaster loan in place because that's where they can make sure that they do have something there for them. Right. Regardless. Okay. So, okay. And so, the penalty. so, right. Uh oh. Mark, you're muted. You're Mark, you're muted. <laughs> Bill, me. There All right, go. I'm back. Rick, did uh, you try to yeah. mute me? Am I talking too much? No, okay. No, no, no. So uh, I think Rick muted me accidentally. Uh, okay. So um, when I go to, I want to apply for one or both. I heard you can go directly to SBA or I can go to Five Star or another SBA type lender. Um, are those the two avenues that I can go to? Why would I, I obviously I love five star banks. So, I mean, I'm, I'm a, I'm a customer, a big fan, all that. So I can envision myself utilizing five star bank, but in the, uh, it, with the, uh, mentality of let's help as many people as we can. Um, what's, uh, what's re what's, what should we be recommending to people? Well, my recommendation would be go, to go first to your bank that you bank with today. And first question you'd have to ask is whether they're participating in this program. There's um, quite a few banks who are not participating in this program. Um, so you hope that your bank is, they have a relationship with you, they know who you are and you're able to ask them how to apply and they you know, go down that path. If you are at a bank that is not offering this program, then you look around and that's where we have seen quite a few people who are coming to us because of that from all over the northern california and even southern california so okay okay start. great carrie do you have any thoughts on that well i think in terms of the payroll protection program yes absolutely agree with mike but be very clear that if you want to apply for the sba disaster loan that's a direct loan from SBA, and you do need to go to the sba.gov website slash disaster to pay to 
applied for the economic injury disaster loan. Okay, we cannot get that through Five Star. We got to go directly through SBA. For the idle economic injury disaster loan, yes, that's a direct loan from SBA, correct. Okay, and then, okay, so thinking about who qualifies for that one, as long as we're there, this is somebody that um, is profitable or, or, or would normally uh, be, uh, a, have the ability to repay the loan according to their financials. Is that right? Or is it going to be, are you going to open up to everybody? The, so in the process of applying for the EIDL loan, it's similar to a business loan. They do look at your credit score. They do look at those types of things, but it's going to be based on your, your, your revenue that you're presenting that you've had, as well as your expenses that you've had. So if, if there are a lot of, and I, and I can't speak to specifics because I don't work in that side of the agency, but a lot of things are being looked at and more to come information wise on that for you in regard to the qualification parameters. Okay. All right. So that's that one. Got it. Um, okay. So moving forward, um, just about who qualifies again. So I want to make sure I, I think I, I bypassed a whole segment of our audience here with the uh, you know, the sole proprietor, the person that has uh, no employees, or maybe they're a real estate agent, who does not really qualify? And what are the, what are sort of the restrictions that you guys uh, are seeing? I think those instances that you mentioned, sole proprietors qualify, for-profit small businesses qualify, they need to meet the NAICS code. There is going to be a baseline credit, and it's similar to the small business credit scoring, and it's nothing that I can give anyone an exact number on. We don't have that available. It's done by a algorithm. So that's why we're, there's no harm, no foul, nothing held against you. If you go in and apply and you don't qualify, you may then be able to go to a small business development center and See if you can figure out what you can do to qualify on the idle loans. If you, let's say for some reason you don't qualify, up to six months afterwards, you have an opportunity to try and requalify for that loan. And you can do that twice in the six month period that comes up after you've been declined. Okay. So the disaster loan is available to everybody, but you've got to have good enough credit to qualify and you have to repay it. Now, on the PPP, the forgiven loan, the one we don't have to pay back, I'm going to direct this over to Mike because, look, the information is becoming more clear as we speak, so this is not gospel. This is the best that we know at this point. Does this, if I'm a realtor, if I'm a uh, sole proprietor, if I'm somebody who's Great not charity. qualified, Yes. Yeah, I don't yeah. qualify normally for credit uh, under small business uh, lending, but I do qualify that I'm, uh, I'm in business and I've been hurt. Yeah. So this program, the PPP program, is something that takes a bit to get your head wrapped around what it really is trying to accomplish. And that is to make sure that people are employed, right? So the, the qualification or the uh, eligibility, I should say, of, of types of companies is very, very broad. Uh, I, I, I don't really know of any who's not eligible, really. Would you um, say a real, how about a realtor? Realtor. So here's how it works. You have to prove to me uh, your average monthly uh, salary in that case, right? Or you could be a realtor that has employees, right? You could have employees, so you have an expense in that regard. So the, the, um, the, 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 the salary that you're taking or the, the, your, your payroll expense, whether it's a, a, a sole prop or a C corp or an S corp or an LLC, that, that, that payroll expense is used to determine the, the loan size. Like I said, mentioned earlier. So there's um, that, if you think about it in those terms, really, you know, anybody's eligible. The question I have had a couple times is, um, if I'm an owner of a company and I take a draw rather than uh, rather than uh, a, a paycheck, those draws are not eligible as part of your um, um, monthly payroll cost. That makes right. sense. Right? Makes sense. What yeah. about an like Uber driver? What's your average monthly um, salary? Yes. Okay. I think more specifically, Mark, question is, what about independent contractors? So, you know, the payroll figure, 
does that include just you know W-2 payroll yeah. or does that support independent contractors that you does pay? Does support independent contractors, 1099 employees. Yes, it does. And it's up to a hundred grand, if I'm not mistaken, per uh, individual. That's right. So in the calculation of your average monthly payroll cost, employees who have pay, pay in excess of $100,000, you have to exclude the amount over $100,000 from that calculation. Okay. So if I'm a realtor and I've been banging, I'm, 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 I'm knocking down, uh, I don't know, 20000 a month all day long, I can only, uh, and I have commissions that uh, my, uh, my 1099 uh, commissions that show that, I can apply for the hundred grand. Well, uh, it would apply. It would be, be two months. Two, two months worth. Yeah. The well, two, two and a half. Worth. You would apply for a two hundred and fifty thousand dollar loan. Right. Two and a half times that hundred thousand dollars, right? Okay. Well, it's two and a half times that month, isn't it? Yeah, the month. If you're saying that. Right. So you divide the hundred grand by uh, twelve, and you get whatever eight grand a month, and then you times that by two and a half, so you end up about twenty grand. Right, 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 right. Okay. I was thinking a hundred thousand right. dollars. Yeah. Think a different okay. scam here. Hundred thousand dollars a month. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sorry. Well, they're not hitting it that hard. Some realtors are. Uh, okay. So this is helpful for me because I, I, what I envision is for myself, we're becoming um, uh, the information hub for these kind of information for this kind of stuff, and I want to have people, I want to have people being able to like calm down about this thing because it's going to be okay. We're going to get some, you know, we're going to get some room. Um, to do this. So any Rick, anything else around qualifications you want to, you want to make sure we're Yeah, there, there was a question about pre-revenue um, and if you're venture backed, right? So Mike, you were talking about, you know, showing revenue. And so let's say that, you know, they've been paying payroll, um, but they can't show any revenue and that uh, in fact, they've been paying that payroll through venture backed capital. Yeah. So both of those questions are really good questions. And uh, I'll, let me start off by venture backed companies in general. I have a have a I have a clarification question into the SBA on that whether we can or, or whether venture backed companies are eligible. My first reaction to myself is that yes, they are. They do have employee expense on a monthly basis, and that's no different than any other company that has uh, is not venture backed, right? So, but I'm, I'm about ninety five percent sure that those are eligible. Now, pre-revenue companies, in other words, or any company that wouldn't generally qualify for any kind of loan because they're not making money or you know whatever the situation may be, there are a couple of uh, unique things to the PPP program, and that is the eligibility. The eligibility is what's your payroll cost, period, end of story. Secondly, there's no personal guarantees on these loans, right? So that in that regard that also leads me to believe that venture back companies would be eligible for this program um and the other um the other thing is that there's no collateral requirement for this sba loan program so with with the there's no guarantee required there's no collateral there's a forgiveness of the debt which really makes it a grant and a lot of people are referring to this as a grant um there, there really is no, uh, you can be pre-revenue as long as you have those expenses for payroll. Right. Okay. So yeah, it's been brought up on the uh, venture back companies that because the venture capitalist or the uh, private equity group or what have you um, has so many different event investments that uh, it would, uh, you know, they really had over 500 employees and so on, but you're 95% sure that we're going to be good uh, for the PPP on venture back companies. I'm pretty certain on that. Okay. The other thing is that in, in, in traditional lending, uh, oftentimes venture back companies get excluded from SBA lending because of that personal guarantee and a venture back company wouldn't guarantee a loan. So therefore they can't go SBA. That's not the case in this, for, for this loan program. PPP, no personal guarantee. Got it. Hey okay. Mark, real quick. I want to go back to Carrie because there was a, a great question about the disaster loan program. And, and specifically, and this may be that express loan thing that we referenced in the beginning, I'm not sure, but a way to create or request an expedited loan advance uh, at a maximum of $10,000. So is that true? That is part of the CARES Act, and we do not have the official guidance on that today, but okay. that is that's part of it, and I, I don't have guidance on how we're gonna execute on that. Okay. okay. 
All right, let, I'm gonna jump into how to apply. What do, what do we need? So I go to apply, what, uh, and let's talk about the, uh, Carrie, let's talk about yours, the disaster program, the one you have to pay back, right? So what do I, I go on, I go to small business, what do I need? What's the application process look like? Do I need to have tax returns? What kind of uh, buildup of information do I need to have in order to apply? So currently on the economic injury disaster loan, you're going to need to have a completed form five, which is an SBA form that's online there. If you're a corporation, LLC, any of those kind of structures, if you're a sole proprietor, there's another form that's called a Form 5C. And it says on it, home loans, uh, disaster recovery information, or sole proprietor. So it's very important that as a sole proprietor, you make sure you fill out the Form 5C. Today, these are what the requirements are in regard to that form. Also on the Form 5C, you need to make sure you check the box that says EIDL on it, not property, because this economic injury disaster loan is for COVID, which is not a property loan disaster, as if you lost your house in fire. The other thing that you're going to want to have today is the 4506T form completed from the IRS. And more to follow on uh, that requirement in the future. And then you'll also need to fill out your personal financial statement, which is a form 413 for you individually. And you'll also need to fill out a form 2202, which is your schedule of liabilities that the SBA needs to see so they understand your cash flow needs, in addition to your revenues that you're going to show that your small business has had and been, in, been open for business. Okay, so these forms are forms we, uh, we fill out online. Right. Yeah. So we fill these out online and then are you, is there going to be uh, if we do, if we fill them out thoroughly, completely, are we going to need to uh, attach other things like contracts or uh, I don't know, uh, tax returns, no. things like that? No, no. Okay. It can all be done by filling out the, um, I guess it's a, it's like a PDF form you fill out and hit submit and it's, it goes. Correct. Yes. And, and once they get onto that loan application portal at sba.gov slash disaster, and I know I sound like a broken record, but I want to make sure everybody has that, um, it will walk them through the process. I think they're going to be pleasantly surprised at the improvements that have been made on the idle loan application process. Okay. So let me uh, move over to back to uh, my man, Mike, here as we talk about the forgivable loan, right? The PPP, um, the application process, what is uh, Five Star Expect to be asking for? Is that the same as what everybody else is going to be asking for well, in terms of application? That, 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 that question is very interesting right now because there is no application from the SBA yet. And that's what we expect for them to have on Friday, hopefully. Again, this, this, um, this act was only passed Friday, right? Just a few days, um, one business day ago. So now the SBA has to go into the 800 pages and go through that and, and uh, decipher exactly what they meant by this thing. So then they have to put into place the process and the application for that. So we're expecting, they've been working along, uh, alongside Congress this whole time, but, you know, but now we're expecting them to have that done by Friday. So in the meantime, what we've been doing, and we've been asking uh, our customers and non-customers um, to help us uh, get a head start on this. And that is to um, apply now, uh, knowing that Monday or Tuesday of next week, you're going, going to probably have a, some other documents that you need to submit to me. But now get me two things, really. Again, it's the how was COVID, uh, how did that affect you and your business negatively? And uh, show me um, uh, documentation as to what your average monthly payroll is. And those two items are what we're using to get our customers in our pipeline. Average monthly payroll document. What, is, what document is that? Yeah, that varies. It seems to vary upon who you talk to. Um, 
Some people, but the best one I've seen is uh, somebody who has a pay ch payroll company that they use for their payroll and they um, print out a payroll from, uh, uh, was it February 15th of 2019 through um, February, March, what is that, or, or no, no, March 15th of 2019 through February 15th of 2020, that's a 12 year, 12 month period. And then I just divide it by 12 and I've got an average monthly, right? So okay. um, that's kind of, that would be the best, but then there's others, you know, they have their QuickBooks, they have, you know, various different sources that they're submitting to me. Um, so I think it depends upon who you're, who you're talking to. Yeah. And the wages include, if I'm, I'm clarifying this, Mike, they include stuff like benefits and, uh, I don't know, the other, uh, things that are associated with payroll is that that's included in the payroll, right? Yeah. So they include all salary, wage commissions, and uh, com, uh, they, they include cash tips. So that's going to be big for restaurants. There's a lot of those. Um, uh vacation parental family medical or sick leave uh allowance for dismissal or separation um group health benefits that's a big one include that uh retirement benefits you include that and um and any state or local tax assessed on the compensation of those employees. So that would be also an employee expense. Those are, the, uh, your, those are your expenses. Okay, and then what about the person who has been um, very quick to lay off people? I know restaurants that, uh-oh, I'm gonna get rid of 90, per, or at least lay off a high percentage of my teammates until I have more clarity. So those people that right now, they didn't keep their employees yeah. like, uh, like we've been uh, encouraged to do, but, it was all about survival. What happens to them? You know, this is the biggest question I have right now. This is the most, um, and the probably most complicated. But the simple answer is, if you've laid off your employees, you've laid off your employees, that's fine. Um, you're, you apply for this loan based on historical employment cost, right? Your employment and historical payroll. So when, once that money goes into your account, there is a time uh, clock that starts, and that's that eight-week time frame. <clears throat> what you what what is the intent of the program is to take those employees and bring them back into your company. So you're getting them off of unemployment, and you're bringing them into your company, and you're paying them with the money that is coming through the PPP program. So this gets to the heart of forgiveness of the loan. So. The forgiveness of the loan, if you use the money for the purpose of payroll and rent and, and uh, utilities, then 100% of that loan proceed would be forgivable, okay? And you have to use that money again within the eight month period, or excuse week. me, week period, excuse me. Um, now, if you don't bring back your employees, and you now you know t today you're 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 you had a fifty thousand dollar a month payroll cost and now you have you know, a ten thousand dollar a month payroll cost. That delta is not going to be forgivable, and will therefore be a loan to you at a rate of four percent over the next ten years. So it's it's forcing companies or incentivizing companies to bring those employees back. I can really uh, imagine this putting a restaurant or someone like we're talking about in a catch 22 where I bring them back so that I can um, get the forgivable loan yet. Uh, I don't really have a lot of work for them to do because um, yep. you know, so I'm, I'm out the cash anyway. Uh, what do I do? Put them on special projects. Cause there's really no customer. There's very few yeah. customers coming in. So there's another benefit to this though, Mark. And that is, um, you know, the idea being that once we get, through the other side of this of this pandemic, that businesses will start to pick up again and hopefully pick up at a rapid pace. And to help ensure that they pick up at a rapid manner, you want to make sure you have your employees in place. If you had if you had everybody laid off, and then when it, you know after we come out the other side, you start wanting to rehire people, that's going to delay the recovery. And that's part of the reason why they're doing this. Yeah. Hey Mike, do you know um, the eight-week period? Um, 
that goes to repayment, is that the same eight week period for everyone or is it dependent on, you know, the clock starts, like you said, when the money's received or you can yep. delay that one month because you say, look, I, I can cover my payroll for April. I want to start May 1st. So any no, guidance on that? No, it, it, it starts the day that that money goes into your account. And, you know, it doesn't, you know, if you have the money, that's all fine and dandy. You just, you know, you get a chunk of money in your account and you start using it. That's, you know, even though you have other money off to the side. And uh, I want to talk about the loan amounts too, because on the, on the disaster loan, there's, there's a certain limit uh, size of the loan. And I believe the amount is different for the PPP. Can you speak to that, Carrie? What's, what size of a loan can we get? So on the disaster loan size, right now it's $2 million for those economic injury disaster loans. Okay. And yet yeah. on the, on, sorry about that. Oh, you got to be qualified. Yeah. Okay, sorry, I was talking over you. Mike, the, the loan amount is potentially bigger for uh, on the other side though, on the PPP, am I right? Yeah, that is correct. The maximum loan amount is actually $10 million. The, you would have to have a very, very significant payroll to hit that number though, like as in $4 million a month. So not many people are gonna go that high. As a matter of fact, I think most people are, uh, are around what I've seen, it's all, it's between, Oh, 100,000 to two million dollars is what I've seen so far, and some even under fifty thousand dollars kind of thing. Right. Small, right. small. Business. There are very few companies like that in the Sacramento region, but there are a few, I believe, and so I want to make sure that we don't leave them out because they might right. uh, might fit. Um, so, in, any other questions there, uh, Rick? Yeah, uh, I want to go back to Carrie because uh, there's a question specifically on the disaster loan program, and you know what uh, the SBA is hoping to have as far as response times. There, there's some people in our attendance today that you know, applied last week and they haven't heard you know, any um, response from the SBA. Obviously it's a busy time, a crazy time, and you know, you've been upgrading uh, websites and resources, et cetera, um, but any guidance on expected response times or, or other communication expectations? Um, thank you for that question. That's a good question for a small business person who's sitting out there wondering how they're gonna make their next payment on their payroll or their bills. And as I mentioned, we've done a lot of work with an organization to help strengthen our website. And those times will be faster than they have been in the past. And I would encourage you, if you have that disaster loan number, you can call the 800 number and go back and check and ask for the status check. Or you can go into that loan application and see where you are in terms of where you're in the queue and when you might have a distribution or, or a decision on that loan. I, I want to encourage you to um, persevere with us through this. We're one of the smallest agencies in the government and we are working diligently and as hard as we can for you to get these loan funds out. Having in a uh, previous time in my life, worked in a small business, been part of the ownership of a small business, I understand what it's like when you're signing the front of those checks. So know that there's a lot of people at this agency that have worked through the weekend to work and get this out for you. And just, just give us a little bit of patience on it. Greatly appreciated. So I can't give you a definitive response turnaround time, especially if you've applied very early in the program, I can reassure you that the changes that we put in place are going to make that happen faster. Um, so thinking about uh, one of the things uh, that I think we think about on the, uh, uh, the disaster loan is, or is there collateral? Or, there's no personal guarantees over there as well? There are personal guarantees on the program. And if there is collateral available within the business, they will look at that collateral. But again, when you get into the specific questions for a loan, idle economic injury disaster loan, that's going to be looked at for each business. So generally speaking, yes, there would be a guarantee and there would be collateral if it's available. It's not required though. Okay, got it. Um, and in terms of the payback on that one too, sorry about that, Carrie. The payback, uh, there's extended payment terms on that, right? It's, uh, what's, what do you envision as the typical term? As I mentioned at the beginning, on the economic disaster, disaster injury loans, it's 15 years to 30 years, depending on 
the loan size and the circumstance. And currently, if you have an existing disaster loan, those loan payments are deferred until December of 2020. In addition, when you receive one of these new COVID economic injury disaster loans, those payments will be deferred for up to a year as well. Okay. So you're going to have breathing room. Mm -hmm. That's great. Okay. So uh, thinking about, uh, you know, keeping this moving along here, um, Rick, am I missing anything? Other questions that you want to be uh, making sure that we cover? One thing that uh, I was told is that, uh, Mike, I'll throw this over to you, on the PPP, uh, the, uh, the forgiveness, let's say we have a, a $500,000 forgiveness, um, that's not taxable is what I've heard. That's not a taxable event. That is correct. Uh, that was confirmed this morning, actually. That was a big question I kept getting is uh, whether the forgivable loan amount would be taxable as taxable income. And it was determined that uh, it would not be considered income and therefore not taxable. And what I also heard is um, it's non-recourse. So um, there's not, uh, if it's forgiven, there, you're not, you can't go, there's, there's no way you're going after something else of ours. Well, um, it is, like, it goes back to the personal guarantee. It is non-recourse in that it does not have a personal guarantee However, it was emphasized that even though there's no personal guarantee and somebody uses the money for other, than, other things than uh, payroll and then ends up having a loan, which is not forgiven, and has a, a loan over the next 10 years, um, if you just walk away from that loan, the federal government still knows where you are and they will come after you. <laughs> and the term of that loan is like uh, 4% interest rate, something like That's that? Right. 4%. So, 4%. Okay. Um, Rick. Help me out with uh, other questions because we have uh, we only have about six minutes left for Carrie, but I think Mike has uh, been uh, generous enough with his time, and, and not that Carrie, we appreciate you, but uh, making sure that we uh, give you maybe the last uh, few minutes to make sure we've covered everything. And so, if there are any more questions of Carrie as associated with the disaster loan, I think now is probably the time to exhaust that because I know you have to jump off the call at uh, at, at three o'clock. Is that right, Carrie? Yes. Okay, any, uh, anything, others, anything else that I forgot to ask um, or that we didn't quite cover that you feel like is pertinent? And then I'll open it up for other questions directly toward you. And then I'm going to work on the, the PPP loan with Mike um, after that. Well, I think you've asked some very good questions. And I, I'm very grateful that you're taking the time to do this for our small business community. And we also, as we get the definitive guidelines, we'll continue to work with yourself as well as our other resource partners in the Small Business Development Center, Chambers of Commerce, other organizations that are looking for the information. We will be available to help you access that in, in these kind of webinar settings. And um, sba.gov slash disaster, go apply, won't hurt you, no harm, no foul, doesn't cost you anything give it a shot. Well, we, uh, I want to let you know, we appreciate you. Here you are probably, uh, you know, going along nice and smooth in your life, like a lot of us. And now your life, just like everybody else's is turned upside down. And uh, so we appreciate you playing through it, uh, all this uncertainty. Um, we couldn't be uh, more um, appreciative of, uh, of you helping us out. Rick, is there anything final that we should be uh, asking Carrie, you think, at this time? No, I, I think the gratitude that you just uh, paid to her is well deserved. Um, so thank you yeah. so much. Um, you know, I mean, oftentimes we don't associate um, government with working fast and collaboration and innovation. And I think the SBA has stepped up in amazing ways. So thank you so much. Thank you. I appreciate that. And um, for, for all of you small businesses out there from my heart, hang in there. We will get through this. We may not be able to do a group hug, but we'll get through it. <laughs> all right. We'll figure it out. Thank you very much. We, uh, now more than ever, we need you. So thank you. I appreciate it, Carrie. You're welcome. I'll be signing off now. All right. See ya. All right, Mike, we're going to come at you, baby. Uh, so, okay, you've done a great job of, again, we're talking about predominantly the PPP loan, which is the forgivable loan, two and a half months of wages, 
Um, you've been very, um, you've been very helpful in helping uh, us to sort of frame that. Rick, you're probably looking at the questions. I see like uh, 46 questions on Q and A. Should we should we start peppering uh, Mike with that now? Should uh, do you want do you have any other thoughts that you maybe you can uh, bring up now, Mike, of things that like we forgot to cover or anything like that? Well, I say let's hit it. Let's go. Okay. Go for the questions. Rick, help me help me out with uh, some of this uh, questioning here, if you don't mind. Yeah. So. I'm looking at I, my computer reset, so I lost some of the questions. Oh, okay. So I'm I'm uh, I'm looking at the questions myself here. I've got Corey Dar Darnell. What's the cap on the EIDL loans? Oh, that's the that's what uh, that's the EIDL is the idle loans that oh two million. Carrie just spoke to the two million dollars. Right. Is there a prepayment on the loan? No, we got that. No. Um, what other resources might I pursue? Any, any other resources you yes. have, Mike? I wanted to mention that there's a very good handout on the U.S. Chamber of Commerce website to go to. So I would suggest everyone go to that website and look for the uh, small business guide that they have in regard to the PPP loan. You bet. Laura Good, I love Laura. She said, uh, can you do both loans, the CARES Act and the SBA? I think we got a yes on that, do them both. As long as, there's, as, long as they're not for the loan proceeds are not for the same purpose. If you, if you cross the purposes, then the PPP loan may not be forgivable. Okay, so fill out those documentation, that documentation correctly. Um, do uh, the program support entrepreneurs, sole proprietors? Uh, yep, those, we went through that. One question, Mark, that I think is important. How do you get in touch with Five Star Bank and Mike? <laughs> oh, man. And yeah, who is you it? know is the it? secret code. <laughs> Which is Mark Haney. That's right, baby. <laughs> five Star Bank, the entrepreneur's bank, man. You heard it here uh, five years ago. <laughs> That's right. Um, we have a, 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 we just put a new email address. It's uh, COVID-19, COVID-19 relief at fivestarbank.com. You can channel all of your questions or, or inquiries into that and they, those will come to me. Okay, um, let's see, Brandon Robinson, slightly confused about, my good man, this is the owner of, uh, maybe I shouldn't disclose this company. This is one of those guys that owns a really badass company. I know that guy. Yeah, he's phenomenal. This guy owns a flat stick pub, mini golf, they're right next to the arena. They've, uh, you know, they've obviously, there's nothing going on downtown. So he's asking, slightly confused about the PPP and the EIDL loan, how it affects the balance sheet. Oh, okay. Interesting. So the, uh, so that's, uh, you could ask our accountants that too. I would Yeah, say. you know, that's a really good question, Brandon. And uh, it's kind of way, way further out than what we've been thinking about, right? At this moment, we've only been thinking about how to get these things out there. That's a CPA related question. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, Haiti <laughs> accounts. We got CPAs on staff, but that's a uh, you might want to be thinking. I know you guys have uh, accountants uh, on your team as well, so that's an interesting question. Um, and I'll be meeting with uh, CLA. We're uh, so we uh, we work with Moss Adams. We work with CLA among another a number of uh, accountants in town, along with our accounting people. So we'll we will have those answers um, as they uh, as they become available. Um, Companies cut their payroll if company, after the loan. My understanding that the balance of the loan is not forgiven. Yeah, right. We talked about that. Um, Someone asked who's underwriting the loan. Is it is it the bank or the SBA? Yeah, so that's a really good question. Um, so we, we, the bank, the way this works, it's really interesting because um, even though it's a $349 billion SBA loan incentive package, the banks themselves are the ones that are putting the money out up front. And then there's a reimbursement of the forgiveness from that $349 billion allocation. Um, the banks are doing the underwriting. The SBA is the one who has the guidelines on that underwriting, as well as in the act itself. Uh, the SBA has not come that down. And, uh, you know, again, they haven't, they haven't, they haven't issued those underwriting guidelines to the bank yet, which is why earlier I was mentioning that uh, get the ball started today. You know there's going to be questions before it funds, probably early next week that you're going to have to go back and you know get something. I don't don't know what those underlying underwriting guidelines are at this moment. 
I heard a rumor about um, how long does it take? I think it was Steve Mnuchin um, or, um, or somebody on CNBC were behind me. They were guessing it would take about three weeks before we got funded. I mean, any sense? I mean, mm-hmm. I know it's not you, you know, it's not your money. So it's like, how no, soon it is do you anticipate? Money. It is our money. That's the thing. So, oh, it is? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying is that that $349 billion is really a reimbursement to the banks that are putting out this money. Because if you think about how this works, you come to us, you apply for this loan. We put the money into your account tomorrow. Uh, and then wait to get repaid back. So the bank itself is, uh, you know, kind of has a cash flow crunch. So the, you know, as you, as, and this brings us up a whole nother topic, which is, um, you know, banks use the money that they bring in and in deposits and lend them back out, right? So banks are at a point where they really need to uh, have municipalities, districts, and others that are out there who have big deposits, they need to be put into the banks for this purpose. That's a whole nother topic. Okay. But it is going to affect us. So you guys could use some deposits right yeah. now. Yeah. Um, okay. And and there's got to be talk about um, somebody, one of the government entities backstopping the banks, because this is obviously going to put you um, out of balance. Are, are, are all of your uh, compliance? So the, loans, the, the loans themselves, because they are 100% guaranteed by the SBA or the federal government, they um the rent the 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 risk rating of those loans to the bank is zero so they they don't have we don't have to put extra reserves in for that okay and then i see uh kurt rock has got a question let's see if we've answered it yet for what period uh the last 12 months is the payroll assessed when determining the two and a half times i think you answered that from the start of your uh of your loan process back 12 months right that's right so you we should make make it uh, March, excuse me, April of 2019 through March of yeah, how's that work? March 2019 through February through February to March 1st of 2020. That would be your 12 month period. Divide that by 12, multiply it by two and a half. That's correct. Got it. Um, what about Mike? Um, what is the evidence of payroll? So you know, other than just emailing you and saying, "Hey, here's my payroll times 2.5." What do you think is the evidence that's going to be required? Yeah, that's 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 the big that's a big question. Um, like I was mentioning earlier, there's uh, some companies have been providing their payroll records. Other companies have been providing parts of their QuickBooks books. Um, some companies have just given me a, a shot in the dark. Um, but there is going to be some sort of documentation that's requested or required to substantiate that number. And okay. both ends, right? At the beginning, so yeah. for that 12 month average, as well as uh, during that eight week period, because those are the periods in which we're, comp- we're comparing payrolls. The, mm-hmm. the average monthly payroll to, to the payroll within the two, the two months that you have the money. Okay. Have you provided any guidance if you're using you know, CPA or CFO services on any kind of um, letter that they could certify? Um, I suppose. I just don't know. We haven't got the guidance yet. Okay. okay. Leslie Williams, I, th- I think I know the answer to this one, but does payroll include workers' compensation? Yes, it does. That's an employee benefit of workers' comp. Uh, let's see. Uh, Brandon Robinson. Um, so we could prepay rent of 100% on the PPP loan um, if we can't. Uh, let's say they have no employees. That's an interesting one. So they, they've... they've uh, uh, I'm not. I'm, I'm paraphrasing my view of his question here. So, you've you've done the layoffs, but you need to make sure you spend the money. So you've got the the lease obligation. You could probably go to your landlord, prepay some lease expenses to uh, to uh, make sure that you uh, utilized uh, you had enough expenses to cover yourself. Yeah, you you could do that. Um, but there is going to be a portion of that loan that's not forgivable because you did not use it for uh, employee, employee expense. Again, remember the whole intent of this is to retain your employees. Okay. Right? Okay. So no, it wouldn't really uh, be the way you would want to go. You necessarily. could do it, but yeah. yeah, then you'd have a loan. I don't know why. Yeah. Maybe uh, if you can get a big enough discount, Brandon, I would say maybe think yeah, about that. Exactly. Um, right. Cause I think landlords right now as a landlord, um, 
you know, I'm not uh, offering this up to my tenants or anything, but uh, I would imagine that cash is king right now. If you're in a position to prepay for anything, whether it be uh, products, uh, rent, anything, and you have cash, you have a strong enough balance sheet, this would be the great time to uh, bump up your margins through, uh, you know, being able to take early pay discounts. And the other thing on that, Mark, is uh, we've had a lot of property managers and uh, building owners that are uh, having their tenants come to us for the same reason, right? So that they, those tenants would be able to pay the, the landlords. Mm, okay, makes sense. Um, let's see, Laura Good, another question. Um, is it possible? Oh, this is a question I was, I was thinking we might ask uh, um, our SBA person, but maybe you have a sense like, is there really enough money to, uh, to handle this in this first tranche? I mean, so there's a lot of people out there for, for applying for loans. I mean, I think there's 300 billion in this piece that we're talking about. Well, what if it's yeah, that's, okay, so, 400 billion? Yeah, so this, um, this uh, PPP is part of the fourth phase, right? That we talked about. And there's $349 billion that's allocated to this. They're already talking about a, another phase. Right. So probably, know, no idea what that looks like. Yeah. Um, uh, we, Anthony Holder, my man, he talked about who underwrites the loan. I think we've got a, a decent sense of that. Um, can Mike give us his email again slowly? Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, COVID-19. Relief at five star bank dot com. Okay. Um, and then we, you, we, we answered the question, I think, on this uh, earlier about the LLC who basically doesn't take a salary, it's a straight pass through. Um, and they're, so they're not paying themselves a salary. Um, are they eligible for the forgivable uh, loan slash grant? My, my, uh, I have been told that they are not eligible, but I still would like to confirm that myself. I'm not a hundred percent. Okay. And, that, and, and, and Mark, I want to, I want to, I want to, um, I gave you the wrong email address. We just oh. got it like a, a, two hours ago. <laughs> it, there's no dash between COVID and 19. It's COVID 19 relief at five star bank.com. Okay. Very good. Um, other, I don't know if I exhausted all the questions or not. Yeah, right. I think we're, I think we're good. Okay. I think we've got it. We've, uh, uh, we have a good sense. Five star is our bank. Um, it's, uh, you're going to get bomb. What are you going to do if you get too bombarded, Mike? How does that, where's your overflow going to go to? Well, I'll tell you what, what we have done is, um, over the, especially even over this weekend, we have, um, really geared uh, a lot of the people within the bank. Uh, who are not normally uh, loan underwriters, loan processors, uh, front end people to be that. And, um, you know, it's all hands on deck. And that's how we're approaching this. We, we, you know, again, that's why over the weekend, we were taking applications to get ahead of this curve somewhat. Um, when, and I probably, I probably submitted about 20 some odd requests uh, over the weekend, that doesn't include today. Uh, and today we're getting really inundated um, with this. Um, so I would, my, my, my uh, advice is to get yourself in line as soon as possible. Okay. Because there and, is gonna be a backlog. Okay, I gotcha. Thank you, Mike. And one of the things at Haney Biz, we're doing that same thing, all hands on deck, understanding there is a backlog. Um, we've been talking about how we might be able to um, accommodate getting the information out there. So I do these things called hanging with Haney where we normally meet in person. I've been talking to Rick about how I could get on group calls uh, along with Rick or one of our CPAs so we could re-answer these same questions uh, the, to the best of our ability and sort of direct traffic um, and hopefully act as a somewhat of a sounding board um, over the next several weeks until, until we've answered everyone's last question on this thing. I want to be there um, for people who are unsure of really how it works and hopefully uh, simplify it as much as we can. We're putting together literature that's uh, simplifying things. Um, our, our CPAs are geared up for, uh, for the war, if you will, um, because this is really getting line fast 
get your loans together, get your stuff together, get in line, because um, this could be the difference between uh, running out of money and really having to put your business on halt, um, which none of us want to do, and, and really ha uh, having that, uh, that wherewithal to sort of navigate as we, uh, as we sort of come off of this, uh, this uh, government shutdown for, for a lot of our businesses. Um, Rick, do you have any closing thoughts? Um, yeah, just thank you, Mike and Five Star Bank. You know, as Mike said, he was working until, um, you know, what, 2.30 on Saturday, drinking from a fire hose, all this information. And when we reached out this morning and said, could you, could you participate in this webinar? Because it had quickly become our most popular webinar of our whole series. Uh, he dropped everything. So thank you, Mike. And there would be 2.30 in the morning, by the way, not in the afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then, you know, just to close out, um, this will be recorded. It, I think we'll be doing a follow-up and answering all the questions we can. Um, but if you go to haneybiz.com slash crisis, um, we've got uh, our crisis action plan and loan assist program. So please check out our resources. Um, please connect with us. Look for updates. Uh, look for answers to these questions, uh, our recordings. And um, yeah, together we can get through this um, as a community. So thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. And thank you all to everybody for the audience because I know there's a lot of leaders out there that are going to be sharing this information. So thank you. We'll get through this together. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. Goodbye. Thanks for watching today's show. My goal for every episode is that you find a takeaway, something tangible you can use in your business today. And if you have a comment about a favorite takeaway, feel free to put it in the, in the box below. And if you have a, a topic that you'd like me to bring up on the show, don't forget to let me know. And also, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel if you want to learn more about entrepreneurship. Because at Haney Biz, we are always by your side.